I think the most um, radical, rebellious thing that I've ever done in my life was to get to know the nature of my mind for myself and to get to know who I really am. And, um, and to become clear on the way that my mind works and the way that I experience life and the ways that I had tried to understand and to live life. And um, it, I, I just think back and it, it, it sort of fills me a little bit with sadness and a little, little bit with regret and a little bit of humour to see the way that I used to understand myself and understand the world and to try and make sense of everything. So I really believed that my thoughts, emotions and sensations <coughs> had a power over me. So somehow I was here and there were thoughts, emotions and sensations and other people and places and that was all somehow going on out there and, um, and I had to deal with it, I had to manage it, I had to think about it and understand it. And, um, and I did my best. Um, I tried to be a good person and I tried to live life with uh, various ideas in mind like you know, trying to have fun, trying to be free, uh, trying to be spontaneous, I probably had that at some point. And, um, and um, until I came to the Balanced View training, really my life was one of confusion because what I discovered actually that there is a bright intelligence that is the basis of my experience that illuminates all my experience by which everything is known that I'd never actually noticed. So without recognizing this fundamental open nature of intelligence and the way that this intelligence is continually opening more, pouring out more and more experience and allowing that to be just as it is for short moments so that I can recognize this openness of intelligence. And that's a key point. It's not just allowing everything to be as it is and then continuing on with the confusion and descriptions. It's allowing everything to be as it is so that we can recognize this bright, pristine intelligence inseparable from whatever the current moment, thought, emotional sensation is. And we can just call all of those data. So open intelligence inseparable from its own data display, pouring forth data. And so to have this as a, an idea is fantastic, I found that really fascinating. <coughs> but that's just the beginning. To have this idea of inseparability or oneness or indivisibility, yeah, it's sort of a nice intellectual concept and you know, quite fun, but actually what this training is all about and the whole training is all about, is putting this into practice in a direct encounter with our own experience, with our own thoughts, emotions and sensations. Because the habit of believing that they have this independent nature and then behaving and acting as if they do is something that I had been practicing for decades. So for example, um, as I begin to take short moments of recognizing open intelligence, the thoughts don't stop suddenly. And there can be all kinds of um, just things that pop into our mind. And I can really clearly remember when I was quite new to the training um, and I had this suggestion of, well, why don't you take a short moment of allowing the data, just your experience to be as it is for a short moment and recognize open intelligence. And, and I heard this. And so my habit of thinking about everything and analysing everything immediately kicked in and um, one of the thoughts that came up will be, well, how, how will that work? You know, you know, won't I go mad? Won't I start behaving in a really strange way or saying strange things or trying to work out what will happen when I start relying on open intelligence? And at some point it was suggested to me, well, Rather than thinking about taking a short moment and what might happen when you do that, why don't you actually try it? And um, I thought, that's a good idea, thanks for that. <laughs> because this is actually what the training is about. It's not about thinking about the training. It's about putting it into practice, recognizing that the thought that you are having right now, the perception, the emotion, is open intelligence is the dynamic energy of the open intelligence within which it occurs and is inseparable from it. 
like the breeze is inseparable from the air, or a reflection in a crystal ball is, in, is inseparable from that purity and openness of the crystal ball. And there's no thought, emotional sensation, no data stream that can be found to have an independent nature. Like I shared before, some of the thoughts and ideas I had about how I should live my life were things like um, <coughs> wanting to lead a... I, I basically, one of my ideas was I'm a free spirit. And um, so then I had to live my life based on that idea. And so I would do things based on the idea of I'm a free spirit. So what does a free spirit do? Um, I know, I'll just go and get really pissed. That's I'm a free spirit. That's what I can do. And um, that seemed like a good idea at the time. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea the next morning. I know, I'm a free spirit. I can just say whatever I like. You know, I'm a free spirit and I would, you know, sometimes I'm just going to say whatever I like. And that seemed like a good idea at the time until at some <laughs> points afterwards I realised that the, the, the pain and hurt that I was causing other people with my free spirited speech, with my freedom, that's who I am. I'm a rebel, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't follow the guidelines. And actually what I began to see was that these thoughts too, these assumptions, guess what? They were data streams appearing within the vast expanse of open intelligence. And by giving them this independent nature, by believing that these were the guidelines by which I needed to live this very limited rebellious life, it was just another cage I was building myself. Except this was a cage that sounded good. It was a cage that um, made me seem like I was living a cool life, or I was a cool person. Or some of the descriptions and um, life choices I made were all about how it sounded to other people. So it wasn't about whether, really whether it was something I wanted to do or something I felt passionate about. It was actually how would it appear to other people when I tell them I do this or I tell them I do that. Again, really believing that what other people think and their perceptions of me, these data streams have an independent nature, have a power over me, and then I'm living my life based on the assumption that they do. <coughs> so it's a very, very um, limited way to live, not recognizing that thoughts, emotions, and sensations are the dynamic energy of open intelligence. They appear in, of, as, and through this open intelligence and nowhere else. They appear spontaneously. Look at your experience right now. Can you predict what your next thought is going to be? Your next experience, a sound, a feeling, a sensation in the body, an emotion? Or is it actually a completely unstoppable flow? And whilst I'm trying to stop that flow, pin descriptions on it, and work out how to proceed from there, life is like, it's like living in a straight jacket of descriptions. And maybe I can try and have a, a cool sounding set of descriptions for my straight jacket, but it's still a straight jacket. So instead, what we learn here is that there is actually a completely spontaneous, powerful and beneficial way that we can live and that we can use our mind. And that the nature of our mind is already spontaneous and completely beneficial. And this is not something to think about. That's not the suggestion here. The suggestion is that for short moments, you allow your mind to be exactly as it is. Allow it to continue opening naturally. And to test out and to find out for yourself what happens when you do that. And what I discovered was that Life isn't what I thought it was at all. Life isn't just a collection of descriptions that I somehow need to manage. Life is always this opportunity to be of benefit to myself and other people. And that the mind and the contents of the mind, all of the data, are nothing other than this beneficial energy. By allowing this complete openness just to be as it is, we cannot help but aligning with the completely beneficial nature of reality we find that our speech changes, our body changes, the way we interact, the things we choose to do, the kind of person that we are, the qualities that we have. 
just very naturally change without anything needing to be contrived. This is the end of contrivance. For short moments repeated many times, resting naturally is the complete openness of mind and then seeing what happens from there. Now, for me, some of these contrivances and some of these assumptions and some of these ideas were things that I had believed in for so long that I didn't even recognize that I was believing in them. So assumptions about who I am. And it was fascinating for me to really see that every single idea I have about everything was something that I'd learned at some point. I wasn't born with any ideas about anything, not even my name. I wasn't born knowing I was called Toby. I wasn't born knowing I was a man or I was English or that I supported Queen's Park Rangers. <laughs> all of these things I learned along the way. So first of all, just that recognition was interesting. Because many of those ideas had become so ingrained about the kind of person I was, about the kind of people I liked, about the kind of people I didn't like. I hadn't recognized that these two were data streams appearing within open intelligence because I had emphasized them and internalized them and believed them for so long that they seemed real and true and fixed and solid rather than just more opening of intelligence, more pouring forth of benefit. And so it wasn't until I did the 12 empowerments and I had the opportunity to look in detail at everything I believed from the vantage of complete openness. And I, I loved it. I, I loved it. I've always loved having my assumptions challenged. But here was something where I was given a tool and a process where I could go through and I could challenge my assumptions for myself with the guidance of a training and a teacher that would do nothing other than support me in seeing everything as it really is, this completely bright intelligence. And um, that was really humbling. It, it, it's interesting when we come to something like education in the nature of mind and um, you know, we, we hear a teacher speaking and, um, oh God, I, you know, I feel resistance to teachers. But if you went to learn to play the piano and there was a brilliant pianist, a fantastic pianist, who was obviously you know, really accomplished at playing the piano, and, and you said, oh, I've got resistance to piano teachers. It's like people would say, well, that's a bit weird. You know, if you want to learn the piano, why not go to somebody that has experience in playing the piano? So for me, it was exactly the same. And it was also really humbling to see that in education in the nature of mind, there were people that knew more than I did. And to have the opportunity to learn from people that had simply gone before me in opening up their assumptions about what everything is and seeing everything clearly with this lens of pure benefit and then demonstrating those qualities in the way that they were, in the kind of person that they were, in the way that they spoke, the way that they spend their time. And to see these kinds of people, this showed me what was possible for me. Because until I'd met that in somebody else, I, I just didn't know it was possible for anyone. And that communication happens in many ways. Um, the symbolic communication through the words is um, very powerful. But to be around other people that are allowing themselves to be as they are, is also really powerful and that's why it's amazing to come to a centre like this and just to spend time in an informal way with people that are resting naturally for short moments and relying on the rest of the support because again it shows us without anything needing to be said that this is possible for us too and it becomes easy when we're around other people who are doing that <coughs> rather than with other people who are caught up in describing and really believing that all of their descriptions have this independent nature and power. So the choice we have in terms of deciding whether we feel negative or not, for me it's a choice in terms of whether I decide to take advantage of the support of a system that will allow me to clarify all data and to give up the right to be a victim of any data stream. That's the choice I have. And if a negative description comes up, that's an opportunity for further empowerment, opening 
and wisdom to pour forth. I just haven't seen it yet. And when I show up in the support, it is guaranteed to open up. I haven't found anything, no matter how negative or painful or unpleasant, that can't be opened up to reveal this incredible treasure of perfect benefit. Living on an island of gold, that's the metaphor. And um, until we recognize the gold that we're living on, we think that we're really poor. And once you realize that actually you're living on an island of gold, everything becomes of, of incredible precious value. <laughs>